Welcome back to another Logic Pro X tutorial. I'm Charles Klein. I'm a singer songwriter and producer. In this video, I really want to break down what mixing is for beginners or intermediates. So this isn't an advanced mixing tutorial. Um, we're really going to focus on the fundamentals of mixing and what mixing is really more for the beginner intermediate level. This is a long video, so feel free to jump to the the right mixing section that you might want to learn right away. I've time stamped all the um, the relevant kind of topics in the description, so feel free to jump to the appropriate section that's right for you. How I want to break down this video is to talk about what mixing is and what the fundamentals of mixing are, what you really just need to learn and focus on, and then actually going into logic and showing you how we actually put those into practice using a real example. Section one, what is mixing? If you have never heard of mixing before, um, mixing happens to do with taking multiple tracks and making them all work together, actually mixing them together. That's what the word mixing comes from. Fundamentally, mixing has to do with turning the volume up and down of each track to making it work well together. That's the fundamental of mixing, really. We're really going to focus on leveling. That's what we call, like, turning the volume up and down. Um, we're going to level all the tracks. And then there are really four main components that we're going to focus on in this video. Um, and we're going to do each of these four components on every track. And that has to do with EQ, compression, reverb, and delay. Those are really the other, besides leveling, those are the four most important fundamental parts of mixing. Besides those four main fundamentals, there are a lot of other aspects that can come into play, especially with modern mixing, because we can apply a lot of different effects that not only are those not like reverb delay, EQ um, and compression, we can apply a lot more effects like panning effects back and forth, um, more echo delay and pitch um, pitch correction, auto tune, or like pitching your vocal up and down and applying more effects to it that can add to the production of the song. So I'll drop some little bits here and there throughout the video of like maybe doing a uh, pitch in your vocal or adding some auto tune or maybe some cool delay effects with added big reverbs that can add more to the production of your song. What mixing won't do is fix a bad song. Um, before you start the mixing phase, you really should have all the pieces in your song from a production standpoint in place besides what you might add um, on the production value in the mixing session. So for example, you should have, you know, all your instruments recorded, or if you're doing things MIDI, you should have things in place. The last thing about mixing that is mixing, but it also happens to do with production as well, is automation and how you, we can automate different uh, effects on our, on, on our tracks to make uh, our tracks sound more dynamic. So we'll automate volume, we'll automate reverb, we'll automate low cut, like EQ, to add dynamic to our track. So we will touch on automation here. Okay, let's start putting everything into practice now, starting from scratch, and we'll go over everything from mixing from the beginner or intermediate perspective. So this is a track that is completely finished from the you know instrumentation production standpoint, and I have all the tracks here. So just to give you an idea of the vibe of the song, I will play it and um, I've turned down, because I've leveled everything at zero dB, more or less everything, I'm going to turn down the stereo output right now just because I want to give you a vibe of the song, but because I've leveled everything at zero, everything is just really loud and, and we would peak if we don't turn the stereo out down. So. I just want to show you, um, I'll give you a reference, I'll play from about a middle of the verse here up until about the middle of the chorus so you know what we're dealing with here.
So the first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, I'm going to get default uh, back to zero here on our stereo out. A couple things we want to keep in mind when we're mixing is this stereo output. So and the stereo output is the, the track where all the sound is going. And so we can, this number is important here because this number kind of shows us how loud our song is and, and it will be color coded as well. So if I play the song here because I've brought this back up to zero, it's gonna show us a, a big red number here. So just let me give you that as a reference. Sorry, this right here. And so it's 7.7 .7 over and that is not good. We don't want to ever see that. It's okay because I know I've leveled everything to zero. But usually in the mix, we want this number to be green. If you can, try to keep that number at about a negative five, if you can, below zero. That's going to give us a lot of headroom. If you've heard the term headroom before, it's just that space um, between that negative value and zero. And that's good because we want that headroom going into the mastering session. So in order to have a reference, we will start with our drums. And this is what I like to do. I like to start with my drums. So I'm gonna to go to my drums here, and then I will start mixing my drums at a certain level. Okay, so before that, let's get organized though. Um, I've already have a structure here at the top of my, of my song, so I can quickly reference uh, if, if I wanna mix the, the third chorus first or different sections here. So it's nice to have a, a marker section at the top. You can do that by going to this drop down here and then adding markers, like move your cursor and then add a marker here and then you type in, you know, whatever. And I'll just remove that now because, well, I don't need that. And then you can color code them uh, as you choose by um, typing in option C and that's gonna bring up this color box here and you can choose different colors to make it nice and organized. This will help you in the long run. Let's do the same thing quickly to our tracks here. So what is really helpful when it comes to making, mixing is grouping your tracks. So let's say you are following this session and this tutorial and you have some drums, you have some guitars, you have a vocal, um, you have a bass, you have some synths. Um, let's group these instruments together and we can color code them uh, as well. So I'm using, I'm using the drum machine designer and this already comes pre-grouped for me. So I can snap this up and snap this down. And all my drum tracks are green here. So that's cool. Um, these are pre-grouped and I'm gonna snap that up. Let's do the same to groups of instruments that have are similar. So I have a Wurlitzer um, Modern, I have a Deluxe Modern Rhodes, and have a Yamaha, a Yamaha, oh boy, a Yamaha Grand Piano. So I'm going to group the keys and synths together. I have a square pad synth here, and then I have a mysterious synth lead. These are um, all alchemy synths that I've used. Actually, sorry, this is a an ES piece and these are all stock synths available in Logic. And then I have an oddity synth, an alchemy synth here. So do I have any other synths down here? No, I don't. So what I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna just color coat these. I'm gonna highlight them all, do option C, and then I'm gonna give them a purple color. Now I'm going to um, highlight all the tracks by clicking this one and then clicking this one, shift, holding shift clicking, and the shortcut for this is shift option D. And I believe you can also go up top here, track and some, something like a, a create, create track stack. So you can also do that. See, it's the same thing here, shift option D. So I'm um, gonna do shift option D and it gives us two options, a folder stack and a summing stack. For my purpose, I'm just gonna do a folder stack and that's just going to show you, I'll show you quickly what both of them look like. A folder stack is just kind of snap those up into its own little group here called sub four. And I can just call this synths and keys. And that's just a uh, folder stack is solely for the purpose of organization. 
because the only thing we can do on this synth keys track is just turn the volume up and down. So let me undo that and show you what a, if I do shift command D and show you what a summing stack is, a summing stack has given us this little yellow um, icon. And so what this means is that if I call this synths and keys as well, what, th what this means is on this track, not only can we turn the volume up, but it's given us a separate uh, bus output. You can see on this group here, we can apply our own effects on this group that will happen to do with all of these tracks. So let's say I wanted to add a reverb on all of the synth tracks, um, or I want to add some EQ. This is good because one, it will um, save CPU power. For example, if we know we want an effect on all our synths and keys, well, instead of putting the effect on every track, we can just put it on one track. And as well, we can do different things like EQ, we can add compression on, on this one track so that applies to all of these synths and, synths and keys. So it's good to do for um, groups of tracks that you know you will want to have effects on everything. In our case for this song, I, don't, I know I don't need that, so I'm just gonna go Command Z a bunch of times and I'm just gonna folder stack that. We can right click and add a nice icon here and we'll continue on. So we have an electric guitar here. We have a bass and a bass sweep. Start renaming tracks here to make it a bit more organized. This will help you down the, um, down the road. This kind of coffee pad crackle and crackle here, this is all atmospheric stuff. So I'm gonna group those. Shift Command D into a folder stack and I'm just gonna call it Atmos for atmosphere. And then I'm just gonna give it uh, like, yeah, any random little icon there. And um, we can just color code those quickly. Option C, give us an orange. Snap that up. So what we have left are sweeps and vocal samples. I'll just group the sweeps and vocal samples together and call it like a shift command D and I'll call it like a vox and sweeps. Oops, I missed the bass sweep in there. So I'm just gonna click this bass sweep and drag it in. So now I have vox and bass sweeps and I will color code the box and bass, bass sweeps get that a green, and then I have my bass and electric guitar. So more or less, and then I have my reference track at the top. Um, I like to have a, a reference track at the top of this, a similar vibe of what I'm going for while I'm mixing so I can see one, um, what, what do things sound like, and then I'll try to mix my song as, as the reference track. Because if you have a professional mixed track at the top here, likely they're doing the right thing. So referencing something um, is really helpful so you're not going in blind and you have like a benchmark or a north star, if you will, to, um, to look at something. Okay, so that was step one. We've organized everything and now we can actually get into the more like fun stuff, I guess you could say. So what I wanna do here is now start with the drums like I was mentioning earlier. And the most important part of the drum uh, the drums is the kick. So I'm gonna start with the kick drum and I'm going to cycle at my chorus and I'm going to mix everything to the drums. So let's get the drum set mixed properly and then we can mix the bass in with the drums, the guitars in with the drums, the synths and keys in with the drums and the vocals in with the drums and then we'll add all the atmospheric stuff. And that's the process that we're gonna run through. So as I was saying with the stereo output, what we're looking for here is um, to get our levels properly. So we know that throughout our session, we um, hope to have enough headroom. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna solo our kick and just see how loud it is. So we have our kick at the bottom here. Uh, we have no effects on it. So 
So that's a dry kick, just a kick sample that I have. And it's without anything, it's at a negative 3.6. So what I'm gonna do is add my effects, um, my EQ, my compression, and I'll add some reverb. And that's all I'm gonna do on my kick. And then I'm going to make sure it's not uh, at a nice green value. First thing is EQ. I'm going to add this Pro Q to EQ, and you can um, you can use the Logic EQ by clicking on here, and it's the same, more or less the same thing. I do enjoy using the Fab Filter EQs because of the um, you can solo frequencies, and that's really helpful. And I also like the interface a lot more than the the Logic EQs. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to get rid of the Logic EQ. And I'll show you what I've done here. So on the kick, I've taken, I've cut out about 39 uh, des, um, at 39 freq uh, hertz here, sorry. So let me just play the kick now. And so I'm just shaping the kick a little bit here. I don't need those. You can see the, the low end of the kick doesn't even reach 39. So I'm not losing anything of the low end, I'm just cutting those frequencies out so that won't affect my compressor at all. And then I've done a low shelf here. But this is just bumping two dBs to get that low end punch. And then I've dipped at 1000. Let me solo this so you can hear what that dip is. That's just kind of an anno annoying frequency that I don't really like to have in my kick. And I could bring that up even a bit more like this. That the very subtle changes in each track will add up to big changes at the end. So doing things like this is important. And then I've just done a, <clears throat> a big uh, high cut here at 8,000 Hertz to just take all that high end that I don't need and that you won't hear. So if I did that quickly, for a Logic EQ, for anyone using um, Logic EQs out there, this would be kind of a similar, a similar thing. Let me turn this Fab Filter one off and do a Logic EQ here. So similar thing, the numbers are over here, so it was about 39, 34, like something like that. And then you, this is the high shelf here we turn that on, you can like bump frequencies up like that. So about a two bump here. And then I did the sh um, bell shape around a thousand. And then I did a cut here, a high cut. So similar shape, this is what it would look like in the Logic EQ. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna turn my Pro Q2 EQ back on. So that's EQ. And the fundamentals of EQ are really narrowing in on the frequencies that you wanna take out and narrowing in on the frequencies that you want to increase. Because as we progress throughout our tracks, using EQ will help us place each instrument and each section of each of each instrument in a place that um, you can hear them and that we don't want the kick we don't really want to hear the high ends of the kick we want that space to be for um, the hi-hats and the vocal and other and other areas so we can go through each track and kind of give them a shape where they deserve to be well, now with EQ we let's what number are we peaking at here so we're at a negative 1.1. Cool, that's still, that's still fine. Let's add some compression. So I'm, I use the Fab Filter Pro C2 compression. You can also go in here and go to um, Dynamics Compressor, Stereo, and you can use, these are really good compressors as well. And you can use, um, yeah, the Vintage FET the Vintage VCA, all these are really good compressors. You can also go in and use a preset, which which are, the presets are 
are really strong too. So this is the classic VCA preset in, in Logic. And you can do the same thing that I'm doing here with a Pro C2 compressor. I'm using a uh, preset. It's called the Punchy Rock Kick 01BM uh, preset. And so this preset, let's play with the preset, um, what it sounds like. So my threshold is negative 24. My ratio is 5 to 1, more or less. I have a fast attack and more or less a really fast release. And I have done the auto gain off, so I have more control to where um, how much more I can bring up. So I like compressing my kicks a lot, almost to negative 10. And right now it's about a negative eight compression. So when you're compressing a kick, you want to look at this number here or on the logic compressor, you want to look at the this needle here. And let's do it with the logic so you can kind of see what I mean. So let's open up that classic drum compressor and see what that sounds like. So it's it's kind of getting up to negative 11 here, right? More or less. It's a really hard compression. Uh, our threshold is at negative 23. It's more or less the similar, similar um, like uh, parameters here. See on the on the Pro C, we have negative 24, we have negative 23 here, we have a 5 to 1, uh, five, yeah, 5 to 1 ratio on the Logic, a 5 to 1 ratio, so very similar presets. The auto gain is, uh, is on here, so we can turn that off, and then we can do our own makeup of the auto gain. And so what the compressor is doing is like compressing the signal when it gets too loud, but then we can also make up the gain on our own, and that's why I like to turn auto gain off. We wanna control how fast um, the attack is and how fast the release is, which means like when will the compressor start more or less and when will the compressor um, go back up? And that's why I like the fab filter compressors because when I play this, you can see it really in action. So let me turn the logic compressor off, the Pro C2 back on. And so, when I increase the release, it will come up faster. This, this will um, be more of a V shape. Let me show you the difference. I do a slow release, see how it kind of comes up a bit. And now the red, the red is like loop dipping and slowly coming out. Now if I do a fast release, it's gonna come back up quickly. So that's the release. Um, let's compress around negative eight to negative 10. And we want the makeup gain. So this um, bar over here, this negative 0 0.7, we don't want that to go above zero. So that is good. That's all we want for compression. Next thing is to add a bit of reverb to your kick and we can bus out the reverb. Bussing means like you're sending, um, you have a reverb on a different track and we're going to add little bits of our kick to that reverb. How we would do that from scratch is to, yeah, go to go to this bus. We'll click an empty bus. Bus 5 is empty. All these are empty as well. So let's go bus 5. And then we would go, this is our now our bus output on the right side of the inspector. So they look the same. So this track, this kick, is going to this track now. It's being output here where we can apply more effects. And then it's going to the stereo out track. So on the bus, we want to add the reverb. And I like to add the um, Valhalla Vintage Verb. And here you choose a reverb that you like for your kick. You probably want a reverb that doesn't have so much of a decay. And just stick with the presets. Here, um, I'll show you what I what I like to use um, on my bus one. I had a Valhalla Vintage Verb, a plate reverb, um, tight plate preset, and the color is under now. We have 1970, 1980s, and and now. So I like the now color. 
So that's the verb. And I'm um, just going to remove this and turn on my bus send. And I've sent negative 18.2. So let's have a listen to that. We What I recommend when you're adding reverb, just over exaggerate it until you really hear it and then pull it back until you you think it's good and then when you think it's good pull it back just a little bit more so let's over exaggerate listen to our kick i'm gonna add about yeah negative yeah i'm gonna actually put about negative 22 now listening to it again to you never really want that kick reverb to be noticeable because you do want the kick really up front and dry in the mix but you want to put it in some type of space um, it does help so that's all the mix in terms of effects we're going to do on our kick and now we're going to level our kick we're going to turn it down until we have enough headroom where we can mix all our other instruments around it so i've just put it down to negative five and then let's see what we're peaking at so negative six that's pretty good I might just drop it to negative six here and then see where we're peaking at. Negative 6.9. So that's really good. And it's it's now got quieter in my headphones. And so how I can balance that out is I'll just I'll just turn my headphones up a little bit. So it's still loud, but not too loud in my headphones. And it's at a, an appropriate volume that you can mix things around. Because that's the danger when you, um, if you start mixing really loud, then there's, you can't really go anywhere from there because you don't have any headroom on things. So it's important to start your foundation to be, have enough headroom where you can build things around. And you don't have to mix at loud volumes. Uh, I would recommend not mixing at loud volumes because for one, it will, it's bad for your ears but also it will just make your ears tired faster. So we've done a kick, we're now at a negative six, and we're gonna um, now pile everything on top of that. So let's go to the snare next, have a listen to our snare, and right away we can just immediately level the snare down to um, where it fits with the kick. Okay, that's good for now, and let's start adding our effects. We're going to add an EQ again, and on this EQ, I've done a low cut. I'll do the same on the Logic EQ. So I've done a real low cut on the, the snare, because this snare has that, you know, up until about four or 500. I don't really want that low end of the snare, and I do want a bit of a boost right where the snare has a bit of a kick here. Where that punch of the snare is you can see it in this frequency here if i bump that up you can really hear it i want that clap snare to be noticeable so i'm going to bump that up i did a bit of a dip on the the super high ends because i really want this to be the focal point here so i did a bit of a bell or a bit of a low cut there just to drop some of that annoying hiss out. Now let's add a compressor and we'll add some reverb as well. And that's all we're gonna do for effects on our snare. So let's add the Pro C2 compressor. And like to compress the snare a lot as well. Do a similar type of style of compression. Let's have a listen. Well, let's turn this on. So we're compressing here at about a negative 9.9. We have a really fast attack. We have a slow release here because we do want a bit of that kind of decay of the snare to to shine a bit and then four to one ratio 4.6 to one negative 21 threshold with auto gain off and I bumped that um, gain back up to negative one so now we'll add reverb I use the same bus I'm on my small um, Valhalla vintage verb. I'm using the same reverb that I did on the kick, but I did put a little bit more. I put negative 13.4 and 
you can add a bit more reverb to your snare as you would to the kick because you it's nice to the snare can really give away to what room you're in so that's what it sounds like with the reverb and the reverb can also make the snare sound sound bigger too so let's now play the kick and the snare together and we'll let we'll mix the kick or sorry we'll mix the snare with the kick So this would be too loud, and this would be too quiet. That's good enough for now. Let's do the hats next. So let's just take a listen solo on our hats. Let's add some EQ uh, on the hats here. I'll bring up a Logic EQ and show you what I did. I removed pretty much all the low end because I don't want that low end of the hat there. So you can see without it, now with it, I found some of these frequencies to be a bit harsh. So a bit of a cut, a uh, low, high uh, shelf there. So that's all I did for EQ. I added a compressor, it didn't really do much, just had the compressor on there. Just a small compression and I bumped that up to negative 4.4. Just so it is popping through the mix. And then added the same reverb on this. I did a negative 23, same Valhalla vintage verb. So you can see a lot of it really sounds bigger and more space and now let's mix the hi-hats in with our kick and snare so this would be too quiet this would be too loud this is just I'm just listening trying to get a feeling it's all about feeling Okay, so that's good enough for now, and we'll, we're gonna come back to it and we'll level it when we hear everything in context a bit, but we're just trying to lay the foundation with everything. Let's mix the crash in. We just have one um, crash hit at the beginning of the chorus here. And you'll notice um, I am just starting out with the chorus on everything. And I'm gonna mix the chorus because it is the loudest part of the songs, and then I'll take a listen to the verses in the whole song in context uh, as well, but I'm going to start just with the chorus. So what does the crash sound like? Simple crash at the beginning of the chorus. I'll add some EQ. Again, I took out a lot of low end here and I did a nice um, high shelf to really let that those high ends uh, really shine through. And then I put a compressor on there. Not much compression at all. And oh, took that off. Actually, want that auto gain off. And I'll bump the gain up, compress it a bit more, lower the threshold, faster attack, and about a faster release. That's pretty good. So that's going to shine through. Now I'll add my reverb. Oh, this is a different reverb. This is going out to bus number two where I have, I call it church, and that is like a large kind of, it's, think of it like you're in a big church, and so the, the space is much bigger. And I like to put the crash on a bigger space because I really want that longer decay reverb. So if I open up, I can show you. It's the Valhalla vintage verb again, and it's, it's still a plate reverb. It's a large plate with a longer decay. It's 4.3 six seconds so you'll noticeably hear the reverb because it lasts for longer and so now i will mix um, the crash in with everything that i've done so far that would be too quiet this would probably be about right so that's good enough for now and that's all we have for our drums we just have kick snare hats and 
crash for for the chorus section at least and it looks like we have some snaps and snares in the the verse section so let's leave it like that for now and we'll snap up the drums it will solo the drums okay so this is what everything sounds like let's do some vinyl leveling here if we need to quickly Cool. So the last thing I want to do to our drums group is I want to put a compressor on everything and also I want to add some more distortion and more reverb. This drum track is going to, I've busted out to bus three. Let me show you this, what it looks like on the mixer. Maybe that will make a bit more vi like sense visually. So I did command to, to open up my mixer. Scroll to the right here, and this these are where all your, your buses are. And so this is my drums bus, the one I was talking to you about right here. And I'm going to add all my kick, my snare, my hi-hats, and uh, the crash. They're all coming to this output. The full track is coming to this full output here. So distortion will give your kick a lot of punch and will give your whole drum set a lot of punch and more compression will glue things together and then i like to add just a touch of reverb to put it in the same space distortion it's called um, decapitator it's by sound toys but you can also use a stock distortion in logic and you can choose how much drive you would like and the tone of the drive and, and where um what what signals the 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 drive is affecting I've added a, a preset called a high crisp, crispy mix and I've increased the drive a bit and I've lowered the, the low cut. So this is what the kick sounds like with the distortion off. Or the whole drum set I mean. And this is what the whole drum sound set sounds like with the distortion on. So definitely a lot more punch to it. Um, distortion is a nice mixing technique to add to a drum bus or drum output. The other alternative is, is just you add distortion on every other element a little bit here, but that's the benefit of kind of taking a group of tracks and putting it to one output and just adding the distortion or you know, any other effect on that track instead. I will also add another compressor on this uh, drum output just to glue everything together. That on. And I'm not going to compress it as hard as I did the kick or the snare. I'm not going to have that drop down to negative 10. On, uh, with the compressor, I'm going to have that about negative 5, negative 4. It's still, still a decent compression. And I'm going to lower the the gain, the dry gain a bit, just because I can see I'm going over there. Uh, I'm going, um, I'm peaking at 1.5 there. So that's good. Negative 4.5 compression. We're not peaking. It's a slow release, uh, a slow attack. We can increase the attack a bit. Um, the ratio is not over, we're compressing about 3.6 to 1 and a low threshold, negative 15. Let's now add a bit of reverb to everything. I'm going to add that plate reverb again. And I'm just going to put it about negative, yeah, negative 28. Not very much, but just have that kind of sit in the same, the same room. So here's exaggerated. going to pull that back. My crash is pretty loud. I'm going to lower that crash. Let's take a look at after we've put all our effects on it and everything, where uh, how much headroom we have for our, the rest of our mix. So this is the drums bus right here on the right. Um, that's where all the drums are going to. So let's see where we're peaking at in this channel. So negative 0 0.9. That's very little headroom to no headroom at all. So I'm not going to lower, what I want, want to do is lower the level, but I won't, because I like the mix right now, I'm not going to play with any of the instruments yet. I might come back and change them. But from right now, I'll just change the 
the um, the output signal. So I'll drop that down to negative five, or neg sorry, negative 4.4, .4, which gives me um, a negative five peak. And if that sounds, after you're doing this and you drop it down, it just sounds too quiet in your headphones, then just bump up the volume to give yourself a relative um, decent volume to mix with. Now I'll start adding these different groups in one by one, and we'll add the same fundamental effects on, on each of these. So I'll start with my bass, and this is at a zero, so I, I, can, I know right away I can just drop it a little bit, and I will um, just have a listen and mix it in with my drum set. That should be good right now. And on the bass guitar, I'm using a Trillion bass. And if you're using, you know, an Alchemy bass or one of the Sculpture synth bass, that's totally fine as well. Um, I will add uh, an EQ on this bass. So something I haven't added yet. So I'll add it from fresh right now. And on the EQ, what I'll do is a low cut just I don't you don't want to cut out a lot of lows but just probably 25 Hertz maybe um, a low a, a steeper slope so 18 decibel slope at 25 Hertz and you can see this isn't really affecting my bass sound when I play it if I just solo the bass a lot of the frequencies are, are in this area the lowest is right around here, which is about 40 hertz. So I don't want to cut these out, but I do want to just clean up the the bottom low end, just so that's not affecting any of the compression at all. If you don't clean up the low ends on your tracks, what will happen is it's just those signals are still affecting your comp your compressor. If you add a compressor, the compressor is going to want to increase those signals. So if you're not cutting those out, your your compressor is still going to try to have those increased. Cool. So we will X that right now. And I'm going to move this uh, EQ to the top of my logic chain here. This is your kind of effect chain that will grow the more effects you add. And it's good to have your EQ to be the first, most of the time, the first um, plugin because you, you want um, any signals you take away or you increase, you want those to be at the top. So if you have a compressor next, it increases the signals you want to uh, increase. The next mix we're going to, uh, mix effect we're going to apply to the bass is a multi-band compressor. And a multi-band compressor is, is, is like a compressor, but um, multi-band means like you can choose the bands of frequencies, for example. This band, this frequency here, is just affecting these frequencies, and I can um, increase those frequencies. I can decrease them. So it's an EQ in that way. But when these frequencies hit this area, it's going to. This is saying um, when these frequencies hit in, in. Oh boy, inside the frequencies of 1600, bump them up and compress them. Um, but I'm not what I want to add here is this low end multiband compression. So what I'm gonna do is side chain my bass guitar to my kick. And this what side chain means is you're connecting your kick drum to um, your bass drum or sorry, your bass guitar. Or you can you could sign side chain anything. You could connect two instruments together. And what this means uh, is very popular to sidechain a kick with another instrument that also shares those same frequencies. Like a kick drum is all in the is most in the low end, right? And also the bass drum is there. Oh my gosh, I keep saying bass drum. Also the bass guitar is in there. And so you want the whenever the kick hits, you really want that space for the kick. 
so people can really hear the kick. But when the bass guitar comes in, you also want people to hear the bass guitar, but you don't want to take away those frequencies to the kick. And so what side chaining does is whenever the kick happens, the bass guitar will just get a little bit quieter. So you can hear more of the kick than you can hear the bass. And so we're going to do that right now. And how we're going to do that is using a multiband compression. So where we've isolated this low end signal and inside compressor we're going to side chain so up here you can see side chain and you can choose your instrument um, whether your instrument well, we're going to look for the kick and your kick might be an audio signal so it would be in audio um, my kick is uh, an instrument so and i've named it kick so it's right here basically you want to come in here and find whatever you'd like to sign cha side chain with to have that locked in we want to go to external here and we want a really fast attack and a really fast release and then I'll show you it in action if we let's just solo the kick in the bass and let's turn this on and we will really bring down the threshold so you'll notice when you hear the kick so this is the bass signal that's that's coming up here. This is the bass signal. And then when the kick happens, it's pushing this down. So we can, to make a, a drastic, um, dramatic kind of uh, example, let's really lower this and lower the threshold and you'll really hear the bass duck. You'll hear it get a lot quieter. So it's cutting all this bass signal when that kick happens. And you can really hear that in the bass. If I turn it off, here's what it sounds like. So the bass is just, the bass is doing the bass thing and the kick is doing the kick thing. Now when I turn this on, they're working together. So it's providing a lot more space for the kick. So I'm not gonna do as drastic of a side chain as, I, as an example. I might bring this to negative 15 and the threshold. The more threshold we bring up to like negative 10, the bass guitar won't sound, um, sometimes it can sound too much if you, if you really increase the threshold. So it comes down to taste now. So that's good. I, I like it there. Negative 21 and I'm doing a negative 34. I could put a bit of reverb on the bass guitar a little bit just to see what that sounds like. So a lot of reverb sounds like this. Just a little bit to put it in the same room as the other instruments. And now with the drums, sol both soloed. So that's sounding good. Moving on. I'm going to take a look at the guitar next, the electric guitar. Lower this because we know we're going to have it lowered anyways. So this is, um, this is a guitar loop that I've already compressed and brought into this session. So I won't be doing any sort of compression uh, or adding too many effects. Um, like dis distortion or anything because I've already added it in another session. So what I'm going to do is add some EQ and also a bit of multi-band compression to sidechain with the kick just a little bit. So on the EQ side, let's start with an EQ and I've done a low cut here about 113 hertz and just a little boost at 9, 974. So with it off, it sounds like this. Okay, so let's turn this general shape EQ on. So cutting those lows. And this soloing these signals here, that's the nice signal range of 
that brightness to the guitar and I want it to bump this up a little bit. I'm going to also add a second EQ that is like a surgical EQ because you can hear in the guitar there's a lot of the low end plucks that really take up a lot of space. It's the base of the guitar and I don't really need such a bassy guitar so I'm gonna, um, I've done a surgical EQ, I guess you could say. It's kind of like a bit of a surgery here where I've done a lot of bell shapes and I've kind of, I've made them really skinny and then I haven't, I've dipped them just like negative 1.2 dB, sometimes even less, just so that the, those signals don't, aren't so noticeable. And you'll see what I mean when you see the signals here. Turning that on. So any of these signals that come up on these colors here, they're just being dipped a little bit. I'm not taking it a lot away, but, but I'm just gonna dip those a little bit so they're not so noticeable. The next thing we're gonna do is add a reverb on here. And for this reverb, I wanted a separate reverb. I didn't want to bus it out to the um, the same plate reverb that I was doing for everything else. So I put a reverb on the channel itself and then I lowered the mix down. And I liked this chorus space preset reverb called the dark plate. And I just lowered the mix to 10.2%. In Space Designer, it's kind of the wetness, the, the more wet you go, it's kind of like the mix knob in the Valhalla reverb. Let's move on. I have a multi-compression same thing that I did on the bass guitar. I just want a little bit of a duck when the kick hits. So the the guitar and the low end of um, the kick and the low end of the guitar are not fighting. So exact same thing. I'm side chaining with my kick here, and I've put clicked external, and I'm just doing a low thrash, uh, negative ten um, dip here range and then negative 27. So this is what this sounds like, just the guitar and the kick. So it's just affecting these signals here. It's not affecting any of that bright high end. Listen to the bass, the kick, and the electric guitar in context. And we'll mix our guitar into the bass and drums. This would be too loud. This would be too quiet. For me, it helps to look away at something totally different and just listen because I it's often very distracting to be looking at the level. So I like to look away and move the level while I'm just listening to it to see how it feels. So I think that's good for now. Let's move on next to our synth and keys. I'm going to do the same thing to most of these. A lot of these, because I'm using stock um, synths and instruments, I'm not actually going to do um, a lot to them because I'm using preset instruments. So let's take a look at our uh, Verlitzer here. We have a simple Verlitzer sound. Okay, so this comes with a stock compressor because it's an e-piano instrument here. And so it's already being compressed. I can increase the threshold a bit because it's not compressing that much. And I'll increase the ratio. Oops. I'm constantly using the, the cycle at the top here, wherever I'm I'm, I'm really always doing this to make sure where I am. Like I just moved it here because I knew I was going to be pressing spacebar a lot and I wanted it to start right on the 
the Wurlitzer here. Okay, so you can press that, compress it a little bit more. Maybe around, yeah, negative six is good. I'll do an auto gain off and make up my own gain. 7 dB. And I will add, uh, these are the stock buses that Logic has given you, and I'm going to remove those by going at the top here, doing remove all sends, and I'm going to do my own. I'm going to put that in a, the church reverb that I have going for this track, and I'll over exaggerate it here what that sounds like. Okay, that's nice. And what we have, this is a stock EQ that Logic has given us for this track. I'm going to edit it a bit. Can remove some of the lows here. Just a small bump at this area. Okay, that's all I want to do here because uh, I like the the, sh the the brightness of this Verlitzer, so I just wanted to bump up two decibels at 1400 hertz. And I'm going to pan this right now to the left because I don't want the, I know I want the bass and drums going right down the center. Um, the electric guitar as well, I will have going in the middle just because it is a main part. And I'll space that out with the guitar by using the reverb that I've given it. And reverb, the tool for reverb is, not only does it help you um, give context to your listener by showing you where, what space you're in, but also reverb helps you push things to the front of the mix or to the back of the mix. And the Wurlitzer, I just want to kind of head that off to the left of the stage a little bit. I'm constant. I'm just thinking like, what would it, where would things be on a stage? I'm going to have the Wurlitzer like on the left of the stage. Let's do the square pad. Let's hear what that sounds like. So this is coming from the ES synth just a stock square pad i don't i didn't change any of these dials i just liked what the preset was and i'm using this just to really fill out the chorus um, i'm panning that a bit to the right side of the stage and i've also done some some eq here i've really cut the lows out well well basically there's hardly any lows or highs but i'm just really narrowing that signal in I really just want to focus on that 900 area. And so that was just a taste, taste decision that I made. So let's now um, mix the Verlotzer and the square pad in with the rest of the three things we have, our bass, drums, and electric guitar, and we'll mix the Verlotzer in. can also move the lows a bit more and also increase some of these areas too because it's just sounding a little bit too low and also I think I compressed it too hard so let's hear what that sounds like it sounds better Okay, that's good enough for now. Let's move on to the square pad and mix this in. We really almost don't even want to hear this, but we're just going to have it there. So, so let's start big and then mix it in.
the performance of it isn't great. So I may go and change that later. But just to keep us on track, I won't um, get too bogged down with the performance of, of things. It should have been complete by now. I think I already said that, but let's move on. This is good enough for now until we hear with that with everything in context. decided I had this pan to the right and I found that even at low low volume it still is just sticking out too much on the right side that I'm going to center it and just really put it low volume so without every, anything this is what it sounds like really low and then with the drums once the guitar and bass come in it's less noticeable So these, these two instruments here, the Verlitzer and Square Pad, they're not really super audible, but they're adding a lot. Like without them, it sounds like this. And now with them. So they're helping really fill a lot of empty space there. And I like that. So the Deluxe Modern and the piano we have at the end of the track, so we're just gonna skip these right now and move on to our synth leads here. We have this synth, just let me take a listen to it. going to fix that performance there. It sounds better. And I'm just going to copy those over, that over to the second section. So that was just a quick performance fix. And now let's, so this was an alchemy synth and a lot of the effects that you can change are under the effects section here. Um, there's a lot of delay happening on this synth and there's uh, there's its own reverb section here and delay time cutoff. So I will mostly just uh, play with the effects inside the Alchemy synth and then I might um, add some EQ here, but I, I'll, I'll leave the reverb to um, to this dial here and I won't double up on reverb. I have the cutoff. If I increase the cutoff, it will sound a bit more tinny. I wanted it to be around 40, 45%, just to almost sound a bit muted, to be noticeable, but not too noticeable. And I can add an EQ to clean up some of the frequencies. So let's look at the frequencies first. As you can see, it's really heavy in this area. See all this low end here? We don't need that. So I'll do a low cut. I can hear. Everything that I'm hearing now is what will be cut out. So now it sounds like this. Subtle differences. But I like that. Let's see if I do any. Let's see if I do a high shelf. What this sounds like. Thank you. 
not a big difference. I, w I was wondering if I get, could get more highs out of that, but the, really the frequencies are in that mid-range. So that's all I'm going to do for, for this synth, and I'll mix it in with uh, the rest of the track here. We have drums, bass, guitar, let's in the pad. <laughs> Just gonna pan that off to the left a bit to have its own space. The Oddity synth is doing the same melody, but it's just um, a higher pitch. So let's listen to this. I'm gonna fix that same performance issue I had here. Just that little short note. Increase that a bit. Cool. I like. This is a default sound called an oddity sound, and I haven't changed much at all in, in any of these dials. I will add an EQ. So there's no low end here. Just these signals here. It just always makes me feel better if I just do this. Not sure why. So I'm just gonna cut anything that might come in there and because it's not really a main instrument and I'm gonna have that lower, um, I'm gonna leave it like that and mix it in with everything else because I like the sound of it right now. So this, so this and mix the oddity in. <laughs> That sounds good. I've done a 24 on the side, and here's a 21. You can kind of balance those at 25 each. Okay, so that's it for my synths and keys right now. So I can solo. Let's move on to our vocal sample here. Let's take a listen to this on its own. Oh, sorry. On its own, we have. <laughs> So this was a sample that I got off Splice, and so it's actually coming like this out of the box with a lot of reverb on it. Tons of reverb on that, so I don't have to add a lot of reverb. I can almost just mix this in as is. What I might want to do to create some more space, and what I'm going to try now, is to add some more echo on this. So let's just sound, let's just hear what it sounds like if I just, if I level it in with the rest of the, our mix. So we have these. sounds pretty good already. I'd like just to try it with the echo. Um, these are the default sends that Logic gives you in an audio track, so I'm going to remove those sends and just add an echo. I'm going to add the Sound Toys Echo Boy. This is um, like the Logic um, tape delay, so you can follow the, the same kind of things I'm doing if, you ha if you're if you using this um, tape delay in Logic or the Echo. Um, there's the Echo plugin or the um, the Logic tape delay also really really great but I just like the the Sound Toys plugins. So okay what I'm gonna do is try some different types of delays here on the Echo time and to solo that track. This is the 1 8 echo. So you can hear that. Um, let's try doing a quarter or half note echo. Oh. 
Let's do a, a, a dry, more dry, which means that the, the second delay that's happening on a half note won't be as noticeable. See, it's more behind. It feels further away. And I can also decrease the output a bit if I want to hear that um, even less. Uh, maybe I did that too much. So in context, let's hear what that sounds like with the drums, bass and synths. trying to mix in this first vocal sample the delay that's happening after it so you can hear it if it's soloed this part the one the part that comes after it I want that to be when I'm hearing it with everything I want it to be just noticeable but not too noticeable and that's where I'm trying I'm playing with this dryness wetness this feedback and the output so I can hear that it's there, but it's not overly noticeable. So let's um, have this, yeah, looped so I can just press spacebar to hear this right away while I'm playing with these knobs here. So I like it like there right now. And I'm gonna leave it like that. I don't wanna to add too much. Actually, I will add an EQ. And I'll have the EQ go in before the um, delay. So just dragging that on top. And I'll uh, open the EQ up and look at our frequencies here. So a lot of unnecessary low end here that I can do. I can also be cutting these these um, low these mids here. Oh, not not that, but these mids that are happening here, because I really only care about the the, the higher frequencies. lower the guitar by just a decibel for now to see how that feels in a little bit and yeah that's pretty good for the vocal sample right now best thing is just to keep moving and come back to it later when we listen to it again so let's listen to the this um, vocal sample two what do we have here Same thing, um, a splice sample that I've done some ed editing to, super compressed uh, with a lot of reverb and delay on that already. So I will do an EQ and I think I don't, might not need any delay on that. So let's remove all the sends that Logic gave us by default. And yeah, let's do our EQ. What frequencies do we have when we play it? Let's just lower the volume. So we can do a cut here. It's fine that we're cutting some of those frequencies because they're really, they're really being pushed a lot. I think it's just a really compressed signal. Mm -hmm. 
Just listen to it just coming out a bar, a bar out, coming into the chorus. I wonder what it would sound like with if we added a bit of delay just to give it some more space behind. Let's add an echo boy do a quarter note delay with a low uh, wetness. Here's what it sounds like soloed. See, it just gives more, even more depth. Might just lower the this mix. Okay, let's mix it in, level it in a bit more. Okay, that's good enough for now. And I'm always saying that's good enough for now. Just keep, keep moving on because later on, I'm going to want to listen to it on my speakers. I've been mixing just on headphones right now. This coffee chatter here, because it has this lo-fi feeling in the song. I've added this kind of background noise here. And that's just kind of giving it that, yeah, that kind of warm feeling. I feel like the guitar really has that. I feel like it's almost uh, someone playing in it in the coffee shop. So I've added this. So I'm gonna push it down really low in the mix. And what I've done is I've also done this automation here where I can turn this on and I'm popping out certain sections of the the atmosph atmospheric stuff. It becomes noticeable at some parts, but then it falls back down, it really becomes hardly noticeable at all. Beginning of the song, you can really hear it. Actually starts with that. You can kind of hear someone laughing. And then it drops down, starts to become super in the background, and then it, it rides out for that low feeling here, negative 38 decibels, and comes back up, oops, comes back up here, peaks and valleys, and that really creates a lot of dynamic to make little interesting bits for your, for your listener here and there. So how I did this automation bit was pressing A on your keyboard will open up, like, this automation interface. And if I was to show you from scratch, I can duplicate this coffee track and maybe I'll just duplicate this one here and do it from scratch. So let's solo this coffee section here and I'll just show you how that happens, some automation. So I'm pressing A and then you can ignore this, I'm just gonna delete that. So if I want to automate this, um, open up, press A, open up this interface. And here in this dropdown is where you choose what you want to automate. You can automate pretty much anything. And in this case, we'll automate the volume. And so I click on volume and this is by, um, by chance. This is the default thing that's chose, uh, chosen in the automation dropdown just because volume is a popular thing to automate. So you just click in anywhere here and it's gonna create this line for you. And this is your volume here. So you can see this fader here is moving up, or moving right when I move it up just because, also this fader down here, just because we're changing the actual, the actual volume of our track here. And so we can be clicking on this line to create different dots and um, we can draw our automation in like this. We want this section to be loud. 
the section to be soft. We can click more dots in to create curves. Uh, another quick way to do it, if you'd rather do things in context, is by going down to this drop down. It's on read right now, but if we switch that to latch, and what latch will do is uh, we can press play and listen to everything in context and just use our fader tool to do the automation um, while it's going. And you'll see the automation being drawn in uh, automatically while I just you know, do this fader. You'll see what I mean when I play this. So you can see that automation being drawn in. I just drew this automation in. So that's another way to do it. I mean, this way gives you tons of little dots here, and then you can go in and, and edit these by clicking and dragging. So I'm just gonna change this back to read, press A, and I'm gonna delete this coffee track by doing command backspace, and just delete that region just because I have the coffee track here. Let's mute it to see if we're even hearing anything. Let's unmute it. Don't really hear it, to be honest, at all. And that's okay. We are in the chorus. So don't really want to hear it in the chorus anyways. But like this section here. Ooh, that was the... Uh, that's a sweep that's happening here. So let's just mute this sweep section. Yeah, you hear you hear it there. And that's nice. We kind of want it to be like that. Let's now mix in uh, the pad and the crackles. Let's do the crackles first. So I'm not going to do any EQ too much or compression at all to the coffee track just because it's so low in the mix. And um, same thing with the crackle. Uh, the crackle just sounds like this. It's just a vinyl, kind of a vinyl crackle. And I have two of them here. One's a bit more high. This is covering a bit more high ends. And so on both of them, I'm taking out pretty much all of the lows. And I'm going to really put those low, 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 super low, negative 40, negative 37. And I'll mix them in just so they're kind of just standing out a little bit. And this is kind of an old school way to add this atmosphere. You can do some cool plugins. I think one's called the RC20. I don't have it yet, but it's really a cool plugin that you can automatically add this type of vinyl crackle to whatever instrument you have. Let's mix in the crackles. You can really hear it there. You can hear it there too. You can hear it in the chorus. Maybe, maybe it's too high right now. Keep in mind, while I'm mixing on headphones, these headphones specifically really bring out the highs. And so I'm mixing at a level where when I come to speakers again, um, I'm going to probably bump these up because I won't be able to hear it as much on my speakers. So it's important to go back and forth on speakers and headphones and also be listening to mixes on other devices too to get a good idea. Okay, let's continue on. Um, the pad, because this is a MIDI pad and it's just playing the same note the whole song, if I solo the pad here and play play um, right here, I won't be able to hear this pad because it's a MIDI note and I need to start at the beginning. If I take off this loop by just pressing C and then drag this to the beginning, this is what the pad sounds like. So it's kind of like a, I'll show you what it is. It's a sculpture, just an air pad. And that's just the preset. I haven't done anything there. What I'll do quickly is just mix this pad in at the beginning of our song even though we haven't really mixed these sections but we've done a chorus mix which should be transferable to the rest of the song so let's unsolo everything and mix this pad in so i'm kind of muting it unmuting it muting it to ask myself am i hearing it is it adding anything do i need it I 
actually don't see a huge benefit to it really I the, the coffee track is nice and creates that vibe so I'm going to actually just mute this entire pad right now and come back to it later let's get back to the chorus and then mix this last section the vox and sweeps so what do we have here we have this um, bass sweep so let's solo this this is simple it's just it's just a leveling thing because it's already compressed let's mute the rest of the sweeps and we'll solo all our other tracks that we have and we'll mix the bass in pretty good we don't really want it to be noticeable but just kind of there to suck us in that's good let's do the same with the crash sweep way too loud so let's lower that sometimes i just like listening to just the two of them everything else else back in that works other sweep here this big big crash sweep so let's take a listen to this for a second a really long sweep so we do want that because it's not a dance song we just want to have that really low and we can mix that right in with everything else I could put a little reverb on it because it is a bit dry the church reverb that I have and I'll just give it a significant amount just to see what that sounds like oops accidentally pressed X to bring up a mixer I'll press X again because I don't want it so cycle that to see what it sounds like with the reverb on Yeah, that sounds better. So let's listen to it in context. We have all our groups mixed now, and we've really only focused on this chorus section. So we are missing out what the mix sounds like just with the drums and guitar, you know, or just with the guitar. Uh, we have some sections here if we lower our, our drums down. We do have a kick with the snare and snap, so we have to mix mix these as well. So the next step would be to do the same process with these sections here and going in and mixing the snaps, for example. You can see the snaps are way too present. They're way too loud here. So I would go in and add some compression, EQ, reverb to the snaps and same thing with the snare drum so let's snap up these sections and the next thing i would do is probably just like leave for a bit or go do something else and then come back to it and then i would listen to this chorus section again and then i'll listen to the full song from start to finish a bunch of times doing the same thing mostly doing leveling just changing the volumes really and see make trying to make things glue um really glue together. Let me do that now from start to finish. I'll do some quick leveling and then anything else that I think is needed and then we can kind of get the song ready for mastering. And by the way, we also want to just keep an eye out on our stereo output. If we play the chorus, I wonder what we're, where we're at now with this um, number. That's pretty good, a negative 4.1. That gives us enough headroom for mastering. So let's start at the beginning.
switching dials here and there. I'll probably do that again a bunch of times and then I'll switch to speakers. One thing that um, can be a big value to the song is because it's there's a lot of similar parts is to create more dynamic using automation. And so I would automate these vocal samples here because they're happening in the verse um, the verse sections. I'm going to bring that down, taking the high ends, really dropping that down in the verses so it, it stands out more in the choruses. So I'll do a low, um, a high cut frequency, automating that. And so I have, uh, I'll go to my things I want to automate here, this vocal sample one, and I'll press A to open my automation. And I'm going to want to look for um, a channel EQ automation. So in order for me to find that here, I need to actually have this on the plugin window. So I have to add an EQ. I do have the Pro Q uh, EQ here, but I like to just quickly do it with the Logic EQ because you can just press this box here. Oh boy, too many things happening. I'll just press this box here and that quickly brings up um, an EQ on the channel. And then now this EQ will be available in the drop down window here. You see number three channel EQ. And I can go to this high cut frequency. And now I have this high cut here. So I'm just gonna click in and now it's giving me this bar. And I'm going to look at my markers here. So when the chorus starts, which is right here, I want that um, to be at 20,000 Hertz. And let me bring up this EQ to show you what I mean. So I'm gonna turn this high cut on. And you can see when I drop this down, you can see the EQ is like in action now, probably around here. Let's just listen to what this vocal sample sounds like when I'm cutting up these frequencies. Let's just solo that. So not a lot, right? You can barely hear them. Let's listen in context with everything. Let's, sorry, I mute that. I can't even hear it, so I'm gonna need to bump that up. Give it some more space. And we can, so that's pretty good. We can maybe even start a little lower and raise it up over time a bit. What does this sound like? probably play with that to find the sweet spots of making that sound the best as possible but this is the idea and the last part here this section here that's on its own it's really got its own space and I want that to shine a bit more so I'm going to increase the gain of this sample just in this section and I can do that through automation as well so I'm going to press a and I'm going to change the automation here to gain. So because gain isn't on here, I'll have to add it to the track. And I'll just add utility gain stereo. So now because gain is on there, I can just close that down and I'll be able to find it in the drop down here. Here's gain and type gain. Press in and now I have this gain bar. This bar means like just the gain is set at zero. And as soon as I start moving that, it's going to affect all of these regions. So I just want to affect this one here, right? So I'm going to create a level where it, like right now I'm bumping it up 24 decibels, which is way too much and bump it up. Let's try what 5.7 sounds like. <laughs> I think the sweep would be cool to end a bit 
further down on this bar here with the this last sample so it would sound like this <laughs> Sounds much better. So see what I did? I raised the bass before. Now I think I'm gonna raise the bass down a bit. So as soon as you start going back and forth on decisions like this, it's probably a good time you take a break. Let me know if you've liked this non-theoretical type tutorial and more practice tutorial where I'm actually showing you something while doing it. I'd be happy to do more of these styles of tutorial. Please feel free to subscribe for more music production and logic tutorials and have, uh, have a listen to some of my own music. I'm curious to know what you think as well and hope to see you in the next video.